Welcome everyone. I would like to express that we are very grateful for this interest in the topic and thank you very much for taking the time to join us for this webinar session today. My name is Katharina and I will moderate today's webinar with the subject Chrome 6 free decorative chromium plating beyond the reach for many, not for us. First and foremost, I would like to introduce to you Christelle Virion and Dr. Ernesto Salazar, who are our speakers and subject experts today. Christelle Virion, graduated chemical engineer, started her career at Artotech France back in 2002 as sales and technical engineer. Over the last 20 years, Christelle has worked in different fields at Artotech. From 2006 to 2009, she supported the Paint Support Technology Business Unit as Global Technical Engineer. From 2009 to 2011, she served as Global Product Manager in the Corrosion Resistant Coatings Business Unit. And since 2012, Christelle has been the Global Product Manager for Decorative Coatings and Plating on Plastics. And then we have our second speaker, Dr. Ernesto Salazar, PhD in Chemical Engineering and Postgraduate in Marketing. He has worked in the electroplating industry for more than 30 years and began his career back in 1991 as Product Marketing Manager for PCB Manufacturing at Artotech Spain. This was followed by positions as technical manager for both the general metal finishing and electronics business units and business manager for GMF. Since 2009, Ernesto has been responsible for Artotex decorative coatings and plating on plastics business development as global product director. Welcome, Christelle and Ernesto. A couple of words about the webinar before we start. The webinar will be divided into two major parts. We have a 45 minutes presentation and round about 15 minutes Q&A session. I encourage you to raise your questions during the presentation and therefore you can use your Q&A function, which you can find in your control panel. Keeping confidentiality, we will not publish the question, so you can only see the question which you have posted yourself into the section. We will try to cover as many questions as possible during the planned Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Of course, when time allows, we will answer all questions right away. Also, Christelle and Ernesto will be available after the webinar session to reach out to you via email. Last but not least, there will be a recording available after this webinar session and we will let you know when it is released and send the link by email to you. So now let me hand over to Christelle and please enjoy the session. Thank you, Katarina, for the introduction and a big, big welcome from my side to all participants in our webinar today. So first, let me go through the agenda for the next hour. I will start first with the latest status on REACH, since this has been a very, very long story, which started already nine years ago. It also has been a confusing and very complicated story. After a short introduction on technologies which are available to eliminate Chrome 6 from electroplating, Ernesto will dive into more details. First, on our Chrome 6 free etching process for plastics called Covertron 600. And afterwards, he will talk about our Trachrome family of travel and chromium for decorative plating. We will then conclude with an outlook on the future of the supply chain and a quick summary. And finally, we will address as many questions from the audience as we can. Okay, so starting first with REACH, for sure it has been a story of delays. Looking back in time, we have to remember that Chrome 6 was added to the REACH Annex 14 already in 2013 as a substance for authorization. This is almost 10 years ago. We are in June 2022 and we still aren't done. And today I will talk about probabilities again and possible scenarios for the future. First, on REACH itself. So being included in the Annex 14 of REACH, Chrome 6 today requires an authorization for use. What we have to remember, and this is also very important, is that we are never talking about a substance alone. For example, for Chrome 6, we are always talking about a substance together with, with the use. 
Uh, for example, here, Chrome 6, used for plastics etching or decorative plating, is described under use 3 as functional Chrome with decorative character in the CTAC sub application. So we have already passed the sunset date. This was already back in September 2017. Since then, the use of Chrome 6 requires an authorization. Since the CTAC application was submitted already in 2015, before the official latest application date, it means that even with the delays which are happening now, all downstream users can legally continue the use of Chrome 6, provided that they are covered by the uh, description of the use under CTAC, which is the case for many, in here the field of etching for plastics and decorative Chrome. Also, what I would like to mention is that in the next slides, the next two slides specifically, I will cover only the CTAC sub supply chain application. What has happened in the last years, and especially since 2018, 2000, 2018 2019, is that many companies or groups of companies have also applied for their own authorizations. And these applications, they are following their own path. Okay, so let's see what happened between 2015 and 2019. Many, many, many things. There has been multiple steps. First, at the ESHA level. ESHA is the European Chemical Agency. It's an independent regulatory agency within the European Union. It is tasked to issue opinions. It's basically a center of knowledge. The other level is the EU Commission, which is basically the executive branch of EU. So in 2019, maybe some of you will remember, there was already a vote at the EU Commission level to grant an authorization to the CTAC sub. Sadly, before this could be officially processed and published, the vote was cancelled. What has happened is that there was a court case on a completely different topic. So here it was about paint pigment containing lead and chrome 6. And an authorization was granted by the EU Commission in a field where alternatives were already used in the market in some countries. So the lawsuit here was placed by Sweden, which was then joined by other countries as well as the EU Parliament, and the defendant was the EU Commission. Ultimately, what happened is the EU Commission lost and the authorization was annulled. Following this, the EU Parliament requested to the EU Commission that they will need to review all of their ongoing authorization. And this was the direct, or let's say indirect, impact on the CTAC sub authorization, which, is, which has created a few more delays. So I was explaining that a substance always comes with a use. So for CTAC sub, already four out of five uses were voted in quarter four 2020, actually in December. So I will take one example here, which you can see in front of you, which is use two. Uh, here described as the two letter FC for functional chrome. This is functional chrome plating, or as it can also be known, hard chrome. So the decision here was made in December 2020, and the deadline was set to September 2024 for the stop of the use of Chrome 6 for that specific use. As a side note, I would like to mention that here again, there is a lawsuit which is ongoing, and the lawsuit this time is directly the European Parliament against the EU Commission. And the topic here is on the authorization which have been granted to CTAC sub on the uses one, two, four, and five. And what the EU Parliament is requesting is an annulment of the authorization decision. Okay, so back to use three, uh, which is our topic of today, functional chrome plating with decorative character. There still hasn't been any vote. So there's still no decision which is officially made. Instead, use 3 got the request for a substitution plan so that the EU Commission would be able to understand better the status of alternatives in the market. 
A questionnaire was sent by the CTAC sub to all downstream users. Maybe some of you in the audience may have answered this questionnaire. More than 800 answers were processed and analyzed, and the substitution plan was submitted in 2020 by the CTAC sub. So where are we now? We are back at EU Commission level, and I will give some further details on the next slide. Okay, so use three, decorative and plating on plastics. Back to the substitution plan. So following the submission, the ESHA, or in this case, more precisely, SEAC, which is the Committee for Socioeconomic Analysis, they provided an opinion. They considered, in this case, the substitution plan as non-credible. It's a quite complex rating, and I will not go into the details behind, but what I can say is that this has a clear influence on what the EU Commission can do afterwards. So right now, as I mentioned before, we are back at EU Commission level. And what the EU Commission intends to do right now is to propose a non-authorization for vote. Really? Well, maybe. As we have experienced in the last few years, nothing is ever 100% sure and nothing is ever to be taken for granted. But it looks like a highly probable outcome and this is not what I can say. So if this is indeed happening, the big question is when? And here we have two options. So probabilities again. The first one is if the EU Commission is waiting for the outcome of the lawsuit, which I described on the previous slide. As the lawsuit was placed in March 2021, and it usually takes two to three years until this is finalized, it means that at the earliest, a decision would happen in quarter one, 2023. The second option is if the EU Commission decides to propose the non-authorization for voting before the outcome of the lawsuit. In this case, the earliest it, this could happen would be September 2022, maybe December 2022, which are the scheduled committee meetings at the end of this year. So both options are possible here, for, for sure. Once a vote happens, of course, there are two alternatives, yes or no. Yes, so it is a yes for a non-authorization. So what this would mean, it would mean a hard ban for Chrome 6, for plating on plastics and decorative coatings, for all the downstream users, which are covered by the CTAC sub application. And this could potentially happen fairly quickly after the vote. The second option of a vote, of course, is a no. A no in this case, in this case means that there would be a blocking minority, which will refuse the non-authorization, and then we would be back to sender meaning that we'll be, we will be back at the EU Commission level, and here we can expect further delays. Okay, so I hope that I managed to explain this confusing situation. And again, we are still talking about different probabilities for the different scenarios. Okay, so looking at a wider scale and global regulations now. For Europe, uh, again here, we know that Chrome 6 will be forbidden at one point. Uh, this is for sure. What remains to be decided are the exact timelines. If we look at Asia, we are seeing in general an increase in chemical reg regulation as well as stricter wastewater limits, for example, in China. In the Americas, also in Europe in this case, uh, looking at PFAS, Knowing that PFAS are used as wetting agent for Chrome 6 plating, these are also a target for, for regulation. And if this is targeted in other regions than, than Europe, it means that it's also an indirect target for, Chrome, for the use of Chrome 6. Finally, what we can say is that globally, there is clearly an increase in environmental awareness at many different levels. 
And this is also leading to stricter regulations. And of course, not only in Europe. Europe is very often the starting point, but at the end, very often, we also see an extension in, in other regions. So the big message uh, here is for all actors of, of the supply chain is, of course, a priority on safety, compliance to all regulations and sustainability. So with this, I conclude the first part of this webinar. I thank you for your attention and Ernesto, the stage is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Christelle, and a very a warm welcome from my side. So, um, when we talk about um, about the um, future without Chrome 6, eh? uh, Katarina, I'm sorry, I cannot move forward with uh, the presentation now. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> so, uh, when Autotech tackles a future a future without hexavalent chromium for decorative application, we talk about the replacement of the sulfurcomic kitchen for plating on plastic by a chrome 6 free solution, and that is a covertron, but also the replacement of the decorative hexavalent chromium plating by the decorative trivalent chromium plating process, that means trichrome. So in the decorative um, applications, uh, there are many different base materials uh, that they are plated. One is uh, the plastic substrate and also the metal substrate. In the decorative uh, plating for plastic substrate, we need to consider that many steps are involved to the final finish. First, a pretreatment of the plastic to prepare the substrate for the metal layer addition must be performed. At the end, uh, what is the main purpose of this is to prepare the substrate uh, for the metal uh, layer addition and uh, make the plastic conductive uh, that will allow the subsequent plating of other metals. This is the first part of the process where a chrome 6 free solution must be implemented, that is copertron. When talking about the metallic substrates, the preparation of this uh, uh, base material will care just about the removal of oils, dirt, etc. Also here to guarantee the metal layer addition. But here there is not any need to work with uh, uh, hexavalent chromium. Um, when we move both substrates uh, to the decorative uh, plating here, what we uh, must do is uh, to plate the different metal layers uh, which will be responsible to give to the to the part the final performance in this case we are talking about a multi metal layer uh, working normally with uh, copper with nickel and with chrome among the uh, properties that we want to achieve all of them uh, are related with the appearance corrosion resistance etc but also here, what we have at the end is the hexavalent decorative chromium. And this is the next step where we want to introduce the solution, which is a decorative trivalent chromium process, trichrome. About the um, process to uh, replace the hexavalent chromium uh, for the uh, platinum plastic, the process by Atotech is Covertron 600. So the pretreatment process is suitable for ABS, ABSPC, and other plastic substrates. At a glance, we can mention that this is a solution absolutely free of hexavalent chromium. And one of the key features that we want to present to you is that the, the process is able to give a similar etching pattern when compared to the benchmark process. So in the screen, you can see the SEM and FIB cuts showing the surface uh, uh, being etched by the standard uh, sulfurcomic etching. And you can compare with uh, the, the same surfaces when are etched by a Chrome 6 free solution like Coverton 600. This is exactly Coverton 600 for ABS and ABS PC. And you can see quickly that the, really the etching pattern is similar in both cases. 
The pretreatment is based uh, on a chemical oxidant and fulfill the standard industry requirements, appearance, cosmetic, addition, thermocycling test from multiple OEMs com is compatible with the existing plastics, including ABS and ABS-PC, and Covertron 600 also shows a excellent selectivity with the 2K and 3K materials. So when we go to the process sequence, uh, and you can see in the screen the standard conventional process and the Covertron 600 in both cases excluding rinses, the first thing that uh, is worth to mention is that uh, as no pre-edge is required for the Covertron 600, as you can see in the screen, the Covertron 600 offers a one-to-one -one dropping solution to replace, replace the standard process from the standard plating lines. Atotech recommends that the, in case of a, a necessity for a rack conditioner, we recommend to install this in the rack stripping line offline. So not in the plating line, offline in the rack stripping line, just after the uh, jig stripping. The working parameters for this uh, Chrome 6 free solution are 40 degrees of temperature and a working time of from 5 minutes to 20 minutes, depending on the material. Also, you can see uh, in the screen that the process uh, works with immersion copper. So that means that uh, there is not any need to install any watts, nickel or any other strike if it's not already in the line. What is worth to mention is that uh, when going to mass production, what is absolutely necessary is the, to work with our regeneration unit. In this case, it's an electrolytic recycling unit able to reoxidize the active component. In terms of a, a thermocycle and thermoshock test, the process fulfills the thermocycle and thermoshock including Toyota, Volkswagen PV200, Volvo, Daimler, Nissan, Stellantis, General Motors, and many more without blisters, without cracks, and without any delamination. What you can see on the screen is some ABS and ABS PC parts without any change after being tested in the Volkswagen PV200. And as you can see, there is no change of cosmetic at all. Regarding the plastic compatibility of the process, uh, we have processed uh, many, many different ABS and ABS PC resins. Just some examples, Novodur, Starex, Polylac, Lupoi, Byblend, Teruran, Sicolac, Starex, Kumo. So I'm sure that you can find out in the list the material that actually you are processing. And we are very proud to mention that the over 300,000 samples have been plated already in Atotec POP lines in the last years. Other materials that they have been plated with the Covertron 600 are PP, PEAK, PEI, and 3D printing. And the process has shown excellent compatibility with the 2K, 3K materials, being verified on a large number of references. It's also suitable for a stop of paint. But uh, as it happens today with uh, the standard chromosulfuric etching, in any case, we recommend a case-by-case -case validation. The resin, the bar geometry, and the ejection molding process, all of them play an important role in the final result uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, the process. And this is also something that it happens today with the standard sulfuric etching and will happen also for the Chrome 63 solution. In the screen, you can see uh, some pictures uh, of uh, the Atotec te technical centers located in different regions and working uh, with uh, the Chrome 63 solution. And we also can be proud that uh, in some of them, we are operating for a long time absolutely Chrome 63. About uh, the field experience, this is extends already. And all the field experience uh, is covered by non-disclosure agreement. Uh, we have worked with uh, automotive customers and also non-automotive customers. 
in a, for the automotive customers, uh, the process has validated the performance on ABS and ABS PC for multiple OEMs. The selectivity has been confirmed also for multiple 2K and 3K references. Hyperions, addition, thermocycles, all of them we have passed the requirement. The validations have been completed, internal and external, and have confirmed also that we are able to pass all the requirements. And the process is installed at multiple customers in many countries, like Europe and Asia. Actually, we can confirm that we have over 20 active customers all over the world. Multiple PPAPs have been already achieved for many different OEMs, and some more are ongoing. So the process is installed in production lines and is ready to start working with the, the new automotive references requesting absolutely free Chrome 6 plating. For non-automotive customers, process has been validated under production conditions and is already in production. From the field experience and when we do a technical benchmark with other processes available in the industry, we can mention the ability of the Coverton 600 to work with ABS and ABS PC with a wide working window. And that's something that we need to mention because not all technologies can offer this, especially when we talk about ABS PC. Also, we must mention the ability to plate on other plastic materials like a PP, PEAK, PEI, and 3D printing. And the different industry requirements, including those from automotive, appearance, addition, thermocycling tests, all of them have been passed for both ABS and ABS PC. Last but not least, compatibility and selectivity with the 2K, 3K materials have been validated on many references. Moving forward, uh, to the replacement of the cristalline chromium and moving to the uh, uh, decorative uh, uh, plating, what we have is uh, the replacement of the decorative hexavalent chromium by a uh, decorative travalent chromium. And here I want to introduce to all of you the complete travalent chromium family by Atotec, able to give from chrome 6 like color finishes to dark finishes. That means that it's not only a substitution of the existing hexavalent chromium, but also giving to the market the possibility to work with the new aesthetics and new finishes. So a quick overview about the trichrome processes, we can present to you the uh, alternatives to hexavalent chromium from the core point of view. And we have the trichrome plus able to give a high plating speed able also to pass the calcium chloride Russian mat test, giving always good corrosion resistance and the advantage to work with the graphite anodes. Also, we introduced to you trichrom eyes, which is really giving a very bright color, is the closest one to the current hexavalent chromium color, showing very good throwing power and very good corrosion resistance and working with the inert mix oxide anodes. From the point of view of the dark fashion finishes, I thought they have a really a relevant list of different finishes that can help to you to fulfill different cosmetic requirements. Starting from the trichrome smoke 2, able to give a warm gray color, continuing with the trichrome shadow, in this case, light gray color, following by Trichrome Titan, which uh, will give a deep neutral gray color. Trichrome Graphite, here going down in, in the darkness, able to give a dark warm gray color. And last but not least, the darkest one, the Trichrome Phantom, able also to give a, a very dark warm gray color. In the screen, you can see uh, some parts plated with different finishes, and you can appreciate the change of the cosmetic. All our processes presented here fulfill the requirements of the automotive industry and are approved by many OEMs. Please check Atotec website where you can see more about the, our automotive approvals for the different processes by many OEMs. 
go into those processes with uh, the closest color uh, to the uh, sulfur chromic etching, uh, sorry, sorry, to the uh, so, um, hexavalent chromium, uh, these processes, Tricrom Ice and Tricrom Plus, are in production for multiple uh, OEMs, uh, multiple markets, including automotive, uh, of course. Um, from the bright chrome finishes, Tricrom Ice and Tricrom Plus are those that uh, we, we have promoted and are in production for a long time. But we need to consider always that the, the Tricrom Ice and Plus is just a part of a system. So it's the final layer, but we need to consider that the, uh, below this critical layer, we have also very important layers like uh, the multi-layer nickel, the macroporous nickel. We need to adjust in the right way the step of the macroporous, but also it's important to consider the chrome 6 free post treatment. When we combine all the different steps of the system, we can achieve a very good cast results over 80 hours. We can achieve really a excellent corrosion resistant in neutral cell spray, like 480 hours. We can pass the calcium chloride with the Tricon Plus. And depending on the color, of course, you can select or Tricon Plus or Tricon Ice. In any case, we are talking about bright traveling chromium processes, while Tricon Plus uh, is in the market in many, many years, uh, over 40 years for other markets and in production for automotive for more than 10 years, we have a long experience. And due to the fact that uh, it's able to give a fast plating speed and excellent resistance to calcium chloride is an excellent choice for the automotive market. Tricom Ice really is a, a ideal for components where the color needs to match exactly the color from the hexavalent chromium. One interesting uh, uh, property also is that the, with the, the, the right combination of this system, we can achieve also very good results in Kesternich tests. As you can see in the screen with the trachomize and the right post treatment, we can get very good results. Moving to the uh, dark finishes that I have presented before, Tricom Smoke 2, Shadow and Graphite, all of them are in production for multiple markets and of course, including the automotive. So we have a different darkness, darkness level, starting from the Tricom Smoke 2 and moving to the darkest one, Graphite. And also here, uh, we must consider this as a part of a system. So again, if we optimize all of the different steps with the right recommended parameters, we can achieve excellent results and comparable to those that we have presented for the bright finishes. So that means cast over 80 hours, neutral cell spray over 480, calcium chloride we pass, the color we depend on the process selected. Uh, and we are talking about dark and chromium processes with uh, let's say the base composition corresponding to a process like the Tricom Plus. Uh, process a process is able to give a very stable color and a right plating speed in production and ideal processes for automotive designers when they are looking for new finishes, new dark colors. You can see also in the screen the results after cast test or after custom write test with uh, some of these finishes. I want also to introduce to you uh, the two last processes that we have, we have placed in the market. These new finishes are already in production for the automotive uh, uh, OEMs. And we are talking about the Tricom Titan and the Tricom Phantom. In the case of the Tricom Titan, remember, this is a neutral gray color. Tricom Phantom is, is, a, is the darkest one color that uh, we can offer to you. Also here, we can talk about the excellent corrosion resistance with over 80 hours cast, 480 hours neutral cell spray, calcium chloride we pass, and depending on the color or depending on the process, we can get the, the red color. You can see also in the screen uh, a comparison between the Titan, the Graphite, and the Phantom. We are talking in any case also dark travel and chromium processes, able to give stable color and stable plating speed in production. Again, giving new uh, freedom to the automotive designers when looking for darker colors. And as mentioned, multiple OEMs already granted with approvals this new process introduced into the market. But uh, uh, we 
must work also depending on the requirements of the market with the post treatment. And when working uh, with hexavalent, with, when working with the trivalent chromium processes with the post treatment, this post treatment mu must be also absolutely free of hexavalent chromium. For that purpose, I want to introduce to you the Tricyl 300 and Tricyl 500 with the following features and benefits. Tricyl 300 is, of course, a Chrome 6 3 post treatment specifically developed for the bright finishes Trichrome Plus and Trichrome Eyes. The recommendation is to work with these processes, especially when neutral, si neutral cell spray requirements are, um, are, must be fulfilled. This post treatment has not any significant influence on cars. As mentioned, this process is only applicable to bright colors, eyes and plus. And with this, we can achieve a neutral cell spray corrosion resistance as a minimum of 480 hours without the change in the cosmetic. Tricyl 500 is also a Chrome 6 free post treatment for all the trichrome processes. In this case, that means that we can use not only for the bright colors, but also for the dark colors. Again, the post treatment is absolutely recommended for uh, neutral cell spray corrosion requirements and mm, there is not any significant influence on CAS observed. Applicable to all the Atotech processes, trivalent chromium processes, and also with this, uh, with this post-treatment, we can achieve a neutral cell spray corrosion resistance as a minimum of 480 hours. I want to insist uh, in this point. Uh, trivalent chromium process is more than just a layer, it's a system. So the final performance of the part will be, of course, part of the responsibility will go to the chrome layer, but uh, will be also absolutely dependent on the multi-layer system that has been plated before. So we have over 40 years of experience with the trichrome, and of course we can achieve in terms of appearance, corrosion resistance, uh, the requirements that the market is asking and comparable to exavalent chromium, but please remember, that uh, all these start already from the copper and the nickel layers. Atotech uh, um, patented multi-layer system and Trechrome uh, process solution helps to reach the high corrosion requirements of the automotive industry for exterior applications. In the screen, you can see the full process sequence and uh, at the end, depending on the requirements, you can decide yourself to uh, install uh, the post treatment if, if your customer are looking for a specific requirements. And you always need to pay attention to what we have mentioned that we are talking about a multi layer system and we need to care about uh, the previous steps semi bright, bright nickel, microporous, etc. This is critical to achieve the right performance of the complete system. As an outlook and summary, we need to think about the supply chain, and this is important to consider. The qualification of uh, the full portfolio of decorative parts in the market is an extensive job for the supply chain at all the levels, from the OEMs, including tier ones, tier two, to the customers, equipment providers, and chemical suppliers. As the deadline to stop the use of exavalent chromium for decorative applications, applications may approach quickly, we encourage all the actors of this supply chain, all of them, to prepare really early in advance. We are committed uh, to innovative and sustainability to meet all the needs from our customers and partners. So, Beyond the reach for many, not for us, not for Atotech. With Atotech, we, you can find out a completely Chrome 6 free decorative chrome plating from the pre treatment to the post treatment. So, for the pre treatment of the plastic, we have introduced to all of you Covertron, the excellent process for Chrome 6 free etching of the plastic. We have introduced to you all the options that you have with the decorative uh, chromium plating to replace the hexavalent chromium by trichrome with over 40 years of experience with this process. 
and all of them, the treatment and decorative chromium plating from a single source, Atotech. So thank you very much to all of you for attending to the seminar. Thank you very much for your interest on Atotech. And let me hand over to Katarina for question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ernesto. And also thank you very much, Christelle, for the great presentation. And we will now proceed with our Q&A session. I would like to remind you that we will cover as many questions as possible during our Q&A session and all the rest will be answered by Christelle and Ernesto after the webinar via email. Um, because we have received so many questions during the webinar, I have tried to group the questions a little bit um, into the topics that we heard today from our presenters. So we will start with the questions related to REACH. Um, first question. So I have heard before that Chrome 6 will be forbidden in 2024 from your presentation. It doesn't seem to be the case. Can you please clarify? Okay, uh, this is for me. I assume as this is a question on, on reach. So please let me try to answer. Uh, yes, indeed, this has been, let's say a, a little bit of a misunderstanding from the past. Um, as I mentioned in, in the presentation, under REACH, a substance is always linked to a use. And this is basically the key word here, substance together with the use. And this is also explaining why there has been a misunderstanding of the dates, especially for the CTAC sub. So during the CTAC sub application, there was five uses which were defined. So use two was functional chrome plating or hard chrome. Use three was functional chrome plating with decorative character. So use three is basically etching for plating on plastics and decorative chrome plating. And if my memory is correct, use one was formulation of mixtures and under use four and five were different surface treatments for different industries, which had nothing to do with either use two or with, with use three. So basically what happened is that the commission already decided on the uses one, two, four, and five, and the date of expiry of the review period was set to September, 2024. Uh, for functional Chrome and, and so on. So basically what has happened is that it has been, let's say, an easy assumption to make that the use three was following the same rule, but this is not the case at all. Use three, more or less, for the CTAC sub has followed its own path, the path of the substitution plan, followed by all of these discussion, discussions afterwards. And this is why as of today, there is still no final deadline for the use of Chrome 6 for the CTAC sub supply chain authorization for use 3. Uh, this uh, also in, in knowing this, so this is applying to the CTAC sub authorization, as I was mentioning as well before. There are other authorizations which have been placed for either individual companies or group of companies. And these are following their own deadline. So this is a topic that uh, has not been covered for for today. Okay, Thank I hope I, I answered the question. Yes, sorry, sorry, Katarina. Oh, don't worry about it. Thank you very much, Christelle. Um, so uh, moving to the next question, when you are talking about a quick ban, what does this mean time-wise? Okay, so this is me again. Uh, quick ban, yes, of course. So I understand that this can be, let's say, quite a scary information to, to mention for, for everyone, potentially some, some people attending today. So this is one of the probability here. And this is in the case of a proposal for a non-authorization by the EU Commission. And the second probability is that the vote will have to be going through the REACH committee, and in that case, we are in the case scenario of a quick ban. 
So time-wise, what does it mean? So we have two committee meetings which are scheduled towards the end of the year. One is in September, the other one is in December. Uh, September might be a bit early, but potentially that can happen. Maybe December, maybe further. So this is still a probability. This means that after the vote is done, and the vote here would be a yes for a non-authorization, there will be some time that will be needed to process the paperwork, process the case, and then after that, there will be a publication in the official journal. So the time typically to process the case is about a month. This can potentially be more depending on priority level at EU Commission. We all know that a lot of things are happening in, in Europe and in the world at the moment, so this is a bit of complicated times. So back to the timeline again. So it means the earliest this could happen for a quick ban would be potentially quarter four 2022, but that seems a bit unlikely and quite fast. So I would say probably quarter one 2023. And what it means is that if there is a, qu a quick ban, for example, in quarter one 2023, as soon as this is done, and as soon as this is published in the official journal, the use of Chrome 6 by all the companies which are covered by the CTAC sub authorization will need to stop. So of course, you always have the next step, which is the enforcement, which will be done at the country level and each country will also have their own timeline. But this is basically uh, what does it mean time-wise? So worst case scenario, we're looking at quarter one, 2023. Of course, potentially later if there are some some delays at different level, mostly at EU Commission level. Yeah. Thank you, Christelle. Thank you very much. Um, I think we have another question here on reach. Um, Somebody is asking, my company has applied for its own auth authorization, but it's not done yet. Is it covering me in case the CTAC sub is not anymore? Okay, so me again, <laughs> interesting, uh, a lot of interest on, on reach, I, I see. Huh? So here, uh, the answer it is, it will depend. Uh, it will depend on when your application was submitted. So there was, let's say, official last application date, uh, which was 2016, or in general, before the sunset date, which was in 17. So more or less, if your application was submitted before 2016, then you are covered until your application is processed. So even if your application is delayed, then you are covered. So for example, this is the case of CTAC sub. We submitted the application in 2015, which was way in advance of the deadline, meaning that we are still covered, even though this is not processed or finished by the European authorities. The issue is that if you have applied after the sunset date, for example, in 18, 19, 20, 21, your application is not uh, covering you. It means that in the in-between period, until your application is processed and finished and voted, and potentially an application is granted, you are covered by the CTAC sub supply chain authorization. And if the CTAC sub supply chain authorization comes to an end before your application is processed, it means that you will have to stop Chrome, using Chrome 6 at your facility during that in-between period. Yeah. Thank you very much, Christelle. Thank you. Um, we will now move on. Uh, I think um, these were the main questions on reach. Um, so we will now move on to questions um, covering uh, the, the Covertron. So, so we have also received many, many questions here. So I would say we start now with the Covertron, Covertron questions. <laughs> My God. Um, you were presenting in the, pa um, in the past three processes. Now you're only presenting Covertron 600. What happened to the other two? All right, so this is me. And the first thing is, yes, thank you very much for the question. I see that the people, they are following closely the, the development of the processes by Atotech. That is uh, very nice. But yes, this is true. Uh, we started with a family of processes time ago, uh, Covertron 100, 
400 and 600. The other process are still there, right? but it's true that in the last year, Covertron 600 has really been the process that we have installed the most. To be honest with uh, all of you, all our new installations uh, have been done with Covertron 600. The main reason for that is that uh, the Covertron 600 is the closest process to uh, the standard chromosulfuric edge from the process sequence and performance point of view. It has really delivered and, and met all the requirements from the different industry segments for ABS and also for ABS PC and also for selective plating. This is the main reason why we are talking mainly about Covertron 600. But we expect that the potentially uh, uh, the Covertron, uh, Covertron 100 might, might be used for niche applications. In this case, considering that the, the length of the process sequence will, be, will not be a limiting factor. For Covertron 400, uh, we really early saw on that the process had many benefits, but also some limitations. When it was necessary to work with ABS PC, especially with a high PC content and with selective plating, process did show some weakness. So we expect that this process could remain for lines where they will only plate ABS material. Thank you very much, Ernesto. Um, for the next question, I combined some questions that we've received um, a lot. So I try to put them together a little bit. Um, first question um, would be, if I want to install Covertron 600 in my line, is it easy? Also, can I just empty the Chrome 6 and replace it with your process? And can I use both Covertron 600 and uh, Covertron 6, uh, no, Chrome 6 and your process at the same time on the same line? All right. Uh, also here, thank you very much uh, for the questions. Um, so let's try to go one after the other. Huh? Uh, yes. For installation in the line, of course, Covertron 600 uh, can share exactly the same position uh, actually uh, set up for chromosulfuric uh, solution. So we can use exactly the same tank. Um, in case that it will be necessary to work with a rack conditioner, this can be installed, as mentioned before, offline. Um, our recommendation will be always in the stripping section, so after the uh, jig stripping. That will make uh, the process uh, fairly fairly easy to be installed in the line. But of course, we need to get any, in any case uh, uh, care about uh, the cleaning of the existing tank because we need to remove any uh, residue coming from the sulfurcomic kitchen. So a very good cleaning of the tank, a very good cleaning of the surrounding area will be necessary. Also, we need to check uh, if uh, maybe is necessary to install a new liner for this uh, existing tank, or depending on the conditions of the line, it could be that the, it could be uh, that a new tank is necessary to be installed. But in any case, the same position of the chromosulfuric tank can be used for the installation of the Coverton 600. What we need also to consider is that, the, as mentioned before, for mass production, we need to consider also an auxiliary regeneration equipment. That means that the, we must think about space and, of course, uh, the, the connection of this electrolytic recycling unit to the tank. The main purpose of this, as mentioned before, is to maintain over the time the Coverton 600 process properties. When we go to a combined line using both hexavalent and Chrome 6 free solution, this becomes more difficult. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that this uh, sometime will need uh, to, to be discussed and check it in advance. So a case by case with the help of, uh, in this case, or support, uh, uh, the support of our local team uh, in the country will be necessary. So please contact, in this case, the, the local teams because they will help to, to, to you also to find out for the best solution. How, however, the issue will come when we need to share different steps, like it could be the reducing after the etching solution, the rinses, etc. Of course, the recommendation is to try to avoid 
uh, mixing up uh, Chrome 6 containing and Chrome 6 free containing solutions, basically because we can get splashes dripping from one process to the other, and this can create uh, some uh, potential conflicts in the line. From the field experience of Atotec, we will recommend having a dedicated process for Covetron 600 from the edge until and including the AC copper. As we know that uh, all these uh, steps are really relevant to guarantee the right process performance, especially when we are talking about uh, automotive requirements, such as thermocycling test. Thank you very much, Ernesto. Um, the next question is also still on the installation. So how long does it take usually to install your process? All right. Uh, when we talk about the time, this is something that uh, we need to consider different uh, aspects. Huh? In this question, um, we need to consider first that uh, we need to audit any installation. And from there to the final installation of the products, we need to uh, consider different uh, approaches. The first question that uh, we should uh, ask ourselves is that what is the main purpose of the installation of the Chrome 6 free solution? The, pro the purpose is for production, real production, or mainly to gain experience with the technology, um, probably to qualify the technology. Depending on that, um, is something that uh, we can say be longer or shorter. One key point will be if there is any necessity for any reconstruction or extension of the line. That means modification of the equipment. Because all of you, you know that uh, when we need to talk about equipment modification, we are talking already about uh, time and normally long time. Why? Because every uh, in every every personal situation or every customer situation, it could be that the modification can be done only in certain periods of the year, like it could be the summer break or the Christmas break or whatever. So the timeline will be very much depending on the spe specific or every line. What I would recommend in any case is uh, uh, to plan uh, this potential uh, introduction uh, as soon as possible. We should start early because in Atotech we expect that uh, the things, uh, let's say, to, uh, to uh, um, uh, tackle the Chrome 6, Chrome 6 problem in Europe will accelerate towards the end of this year and early next year. And believe me that the market will be extremely busy on all sides, not only from the point of view of the chemistry suppliers, but also from the point of view of the equipment supplier. So it's something that we need to, to consider. Thank you very much, Ernesto. Um, we are running a bit out of time, so this will be the last question answered during the webinar presentation. But um, Ernesto and Christelle will reach out to you, as I said before, and answer all the remaining questions via email. So last question for, um, for this time. Um, how is the adhesion of Covertron 600? Right. Thank you for, for this question. This is always really important. Yes, as has been shown in the presentation, the Covertron 600 shows a similar etching pattern which is really comparable uh, to the chromosulfuric etching. So that means that the, the addition is comparable and you should expect the same ranges as the, we have today. Um, as mentioned also during the presentation, Coberton 600 has passed many thermocycle tests from many OEMs, including PV200 and others. And that is, has been achieved on thousands of ABS PC parts right now being plated internally in POP lines by Atotech or externally in customer's line. So when we say we pass, that means that in all the cases, we achieve no cracks, no blister, no delamination. Atotech has also participated recently in an industrial benchmark round robin test. The main purpose has been to evaluate the development and the status of the Chrome 6 technology. One of the evaluation criteria has been, of course, this specific test thermocycling test or thermoshock test addition at the end. And the good results that uh, had been achieved by Atotec confirm that for different parts of ABS, ABSPC, and also selective parts, we can pass absolutely all the criteria in terms of addition for the automotive market. 
Thank you very much, Ernesto, and also thank you very much, Christelle, for your time. And uh, we also want to thank you, everyone. We really appreciate you being here today. There will be a replay of this webinar available within the next few days, and we will send an email with the replay link out to you. For all our on-demand webinars, please visit artotech.com slash media slash webinars. We will also keep you up to date by email about all our upcoming webinars. Um, also, last but not least, we would like to kindly ask you to take a few minutes after the webinar session to answer a short survey for us, because your feedback is very um, important. So for me, there's only one thing left to say for today. Um, thank you very much. Stay healthy and safe, and I hope to see you next time. Thank you very much, and goodbye.